welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Our Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. In this particular session, we are looking at content marketing. So if you own a business, you know how important it is to just maximize on your profit profit and one of the best ways is getting your business on an online space and also the marketing aspect of it is very uh, vital so according to Michael Brina which who is actually a CEO of one of the best marketing company in the world says this that content marketing is the gap between what brand produces and what consumer actually wants so you can see how very important it is when it comes to actually taking your business in an online space and the marketing aspects and then today we're looking at uh, content marketing and in studio i am joined by kimani patrick or should I go the other way? Patrick Kemadi, who is the CEO of Invask Magazine and a couple of other things that he's involved in when it comes to networking and also involving the young people. Thank you very much, Patrick, for creating time to be with us. You're much welcome, Michelle. I'm grateful to be here. All right. Yes. So you're doing well. You look very, very dashing this morning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so starting us off, Patrick, for yes. someone who is meeting you for the first time, yes. who is Patrick Kimani? Um, Patrick is a young Kenyan entrepreneur, mm -hmm. the founder and the publisher of Invask magazine, mm -hmm. and uh, the host for the annual East Africa CEO's Breakfast, mm -hmm. and also the newly launched uh, Calstick, which is a marketing agency for, uh, for companies in Nairobi. Yes. Before we get into what Patrick does, because yes. it's a couple of things that yes. you're actually involved in, I'd like, to, I'd like you to give us a brief background before you got into the business space. Where yes. was your mind at? Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in the village, a small village um, in an area called Matunda, that okay. is in Moranga County, mm -hmm. Gatanga constituency, the lower part of Gatanga, in uh, Kakuzumi to Biru Ward. So mm -hmm. that's where I was raised mm -hmm. i wasn't born there um i was probably s born somewhere in a hospital which i don't know where <laughs> i'll find out and um <coughs> i grew up there that's mm -hmm. where i went to both primarily primary and high school mm -hmm. in the same village and then um after that i came to nairobi i actually spent four years across the the fence at the university of nairobi <laughs> Uh, pursuing a bachelor's right. degree in arts and majored in communication. Okay, yes. majored in communication. So if, yes. you're, if you're not on the other side, you'll be on this other side of my space. Uh, not really. Uh, I didn't want to pursue BA. Oh, right. um, I didn't want to pursue communications. Mm -hmm. I was so much in love with mathematics and okay. economics, okay. and I wanted to get into the world of finance. But at the same time, you know, um, while other students were like... Um, I have to do engineering, um, medicine, or such kind of things. In my mind, I was like, um, I can't be in the village, uh, both in primary and high school, uh, and at the same time go to the university in the village. So I have to be at the University of Nairobi. So after my KCSC results, I had to ensure that I apply for a course through the Joint Admissions Board. Back then, I understand nowadays it's called KUCCPS or something like that. Mm. I had to apply for a course that could guarantee me a placement at the University of Nairobi. And that's exactly what I did. So I joined the University of Nairobi um, in uh, May 2013. Okay. And then um, I, in BA, you have to pursue some three disciplines. Absolutely. There is around 21 disciplines in BA. You pursue three during your first year and second year. And then after that, you can either specialize or minor, major, or double major. So I pursued uh, mathematics, economics, and communication. All right, yes, okay. and then that's why I ended up uh, majoring in communication and a small minor in economics. All right. Yes. And that explains a lot when it comes to what you do? Yes, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> it so yeah, it really okay. influenced um, part of what I'm doing. All right. So how did you get into uh, the content marketing business space? So to start over, um, as a university student, of course, we learned a lot of things to do with communication um, and um, marketing at the same time in terms of PR and advertising, broadcasting and all those things. But uh, back then, during my university days, I used to be interested in politics and at the same time I was doing um, motivational speaking in schools. and. Um, I had this goal of one day building my own business, but I didn't know what kind of business I wanted to get into. So okay. um, 
I thought I would do a magazine. Mm -hmm. That time, you know, being in motivation and everything, I, I wanted to do the motivator mm -hmm. <laughs> a magazine. And then um, that was in 2014. Uh, I got the name Invask in 2015. Uh, started it out as a personal development blog. And then, um, you know, as, as, as we grow and as, it, as we advance and as you get into business more and more, you get to learn and get more ideas and your ideas get fine-tuned. So um, in 2017, that is after my campus days, we transformed it from just a personal development blog to a business magazine for startups. Right. So we held a launch mm -hmm. event. Um, uh, we, we actually held it at All Saints Cathedral. And then um, after that, we, um, after the launch, we grew it as a startups magazine. And then we discovered, apart from just startups, there's so many entrepreneurs even big time entrepreneurs in Kenya who want to share their, um, their experience uh, and, and, and experts who want to share the expert on how to build a business. And therefore we decided instead of just focusing on how one can start, okay. there's so many people who are looking at how they can build and scale their businesses. So that's how we moved from just focusing on how one can start and we added the aspect of building and scaling. Mm. That is in 2018. And then as we continued to grow, Many people discovered that we are publishing content mm -hmm. and we are helping uh, people learn how they can build their businesses. And even as our, as our blog and magazine gained traction and got uh, more readers, we discovered that we can help people distribute their content. Okay. So you write articles and you distribute. And that is how we have been able to learn. We can also do content through, um, you know, harnessing our skills in creating uh, best of content, great content. We can do it for organizations at the same time they market and grow themselves. All right, what business gap did you see uh, in order to transition from just being a personal development blog to actually mm. an, um, a magazine, a business mm. magazine? Well, in Africa, we have a very great gap in terms of getting jobs. It is really difficult to get a job in, in Kenya um, or any other African country. I believe it's the same in the whole world. And uh, I wanted to, you know, provide a job for myself and at the same time help others um, mm -hmm. get jobs. But I discovered the best way in which I can help solve the problem of unemployment unemploy is helping create a new generation of entrepreneurs, help people learn how they can build their businesses. Because I believe if somebody reads Invask today, uh, uh, maybe an article on marketing, maybe an article on finance or any other area that they want to um, to reboot or to boot um, to, to change in their business and they definitely change it they'll become more profitable they'll be able to scale and build their businesses and that way they will be able to employ more so by helping entrepreneurs grow and expand their businesses mm -hmm. they create employment so through invest magazine and through the events that we do like we host the annual ceo's breakfast uh, we have held it for three years 2018 2019 and 2020 ceos come together they learn they partner together, they invest in each other, and by doing so, they create more employment. So we are helping solve the, prob the problem of unemployment mm -hmm. indirectly. Okay, so yes. we'll get back to the breakfast uh, CEOs, uh, all about what it offers and why p young people should be part of it. But let's look at, for someone who is watching this and they want to start a business, how mm. do they go about starting something that they are passionate about? Because it sounds like you're passionate about what you do. Well, uh, how do you get to start a business? Number one, we have to agree that not every single person can become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even um, during the times of Jesus, for those who know him, um, he had to have his vision and he had to have his goal, um, you know, and, and he had to have uh, his assistance, that is the disciples. So Jesus had the vision. He knew what he wanted to do with the gospel, but he had to have people to help him advance the gospel. And it's the same thing in business. When the government or our leaders in government tell us, youth should create employment for themselves, it is not possible. Because we have people who are cut out to be entrepreneurs. We have people who are cut out to, you know, work for the, for, for the companies that these people will, 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 will definitely start. So if you are cut out to be an entrepreneur and you want to harness your passion into 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 getting into business one of the simple things that you need to look at is uh you need to identify the areas in which you can engage through your areas of passion let's mm -hmm. say for example you're passionate about uh fashion there, there's so much you can do about fashion let's say you want to do things to do with uh clothes they they, they, they exist so many gaps in terms of do you want to sell shoes do you want mm -hmm. to sell clothes 
for women, for men, for working class uh, individuals, for children. You know, there, there's so many things that you have to, to look at in terms of where exactly you mm -hmm. want to venture into. So you have to do your own research. And at the same time, you know, aligning it with your passion, you have to mm -hmm. look at what are you passionate about in fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, are you looking at the modern, classy, uh, young man or woman? Or you're looking at the modern business person mm -hmm. or the modern executive okay. or the modern child? Mm -hmm. or, and at the same time, you, you need to look at, are you looking at people in school, you know, school uniforms and all that? Yes. All right. So what are the some couple of mistakes that you wish you could have avoided three years down the road when it comes to Inverse magazine? What, what are a couple of those mistakes that you wow. should have avoided? Mistakes are many. We make <laughs> mistakes every single day. It is actually part of the process. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, uh, working with the wrong people, that is, uh, I started out, I partnered with two people who are not passionate about what I was doing, and uh, definitely we had to fail out. Mm -hmm. um, I had sometimes... Um, hire the wrong people who are mm -hmm. not passionate about what they are doing and uh, they are not even good at what they do and that really slows, um, it slows the growth of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, at other times, um, and this is a very major mistake that um, we make as entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, when you get a client you are not really keen, you are mm -hmm. so much focused on the money you will get from oh, the yes. client and mm -hmm. forget about the things that you have to do before you do what you do and that is making a uh, clear legal getting into a clear legal contracts uh, you know outlining the terms of payments and that has made really me lose a lot of money from so many clients so um usually advice if you're getting into business and mm -hmm. you're getting to uh, offer a service or a product to any client have your own terms of payment set out clearly and very well understood to you and to the client that you're offering the service to yeah, yeah. Okay, when it comes to uh, content marketing, you decided to just not provide Inverse ma uh, magazine, business magazine, but you also ventured into another company. Uh, I don't know if it's another company, it's just within. It's, it's actually a whole, it's a whole new company. It's a whole new company. Yes. So what made you uh, move from uh, just the uh, Inverse business mm -hmm. magazine to mm -hmm. a new company that mm -hmm. deals with the content marketing purely? I actually didn't move out of Inverse because Inverse is something that I want to do for the rest of my it's life. It's connected with. Yes. But what we're doing is uh, through Inverse, we've been able to create, you know, really great content. And we have a great content gap in Africa. Most organizations in Africa focus on selling, 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 selling. But you need to nurture your leads. Companies need to nurture their leads. Uh, clients are always asking questions and when they ask these questions they ask them on Facebook they ask them on Google when you go and uh, and, and search something on Google like for example um, men's shoes in Kenya mm -hmm. or um, restaurants in Nairobi you'll find other suggested searches those other suggested searches on Google uh, are actually things that people search on the internet when you look at um, genuine real estate companies in Kenya. You will see, you know, all those things. Or how to buy land in Kenya. We'll right. see other suggested uh, yeah, the searches in suggested, Kenya. Yes. And those are questions mm -hmm. that people are asking. Now, I believe that the best people to answer these questions are actually the companies which are offering these solutions. So, a real estate company needs to educate its potential clients, its existing clients, on everything real estate. If you're in a financial service uh, sector you need to educate your clients in terms mm -hmm. of everything in, in the financial services if you are in the banking for example you need to educate your people about loans mortgages sure. and all these things and also at the same time you need to tell people how your services are different from the others mm -hmm. using uh, clear value driven content mm -hmm. and most companies do not forget that they, they, they just do their content haphazardly and even on their website they focus on designing a very good website mm -hmm. but you go to that content that is on the website the, co the content copies they're actually not designed uh, to, to, to inspire and to lead uh, the readers or the visitors of these websites into conversion or into um, you know action in terms of purchasing their product and that is the gap that we are filling in mm -hmm. we want these companies starting from their product descriptions from their about section and to every single content they create they create value driven content so okay. we are helping them copyright their profiles we're helping them copyright their websites 
and you are going even further to help them copyright their products uh, to copyright uh, to do blogs articles are really good because people talk about search engine optimization and they are only focusing on the basic the tech aspect of it but one thing that is happening is internet and technology is changing every single day the algorithms of google and bing and every other search engine are changing every other day so when you create a website okay. uh, people focus on setting the keywords mm -hmm. and optimizing the website which is really good but every other day google is google crawlers are crawling millions of sites every single day so if you uh, create consistent content mm -hmm. with the keywords in your industry google crawlers will definitely crawl your website every single day or every single week thereby ranking your website higher so when you look at a company that is doing let's say even if it's just one blog article in a week in a week or in a month mm -hmm. google crawlers will be able to crawl that website and people will be able to when they search on the internet they will see your results uh, on the first page of of Google and they will be able to learn about your service offering or your expertise you know um, uh, you know uh, strategically positioning yourself as a um, as a leader in your industry because if I speak on something that I understand and you can see that I can understand and I'm, I'm offering services in the line of what I'm talking about definitely I'm the best person to buy from mm -hmm. so the same thing with every other company if you are um, a restaurant let's say uh, let's talk about hotels if you are a hotel and you're telling us about your your, your products and uh, how good your place is and all those things then definitely people will be reading more about you let's say we are searching for hotels in Mombasa hotels in Kisumu yes, and like all that. Yes, like you build the credibility that is. Yes, exactly. Okay. And when, maybe I'm not traveling to Kisumu today, but I will be looking at things that people do in Kisumu. Mm. And uh, when I do that, I will be getting articles from travel agencies. Mm -hmm. I will be getting articles from uh, hotels. Mm -hmm. And definitely the next time I want to travel to Kisumu, guess who will come from my mind? That travel agency that I read an article from. Okay. The article from that, the hotel that wrote an article about things to do with Kusumu and their best amenities and everything is the hotel that will come to my mind that that is where I should go and reside within the week or a couple of days that I will be in Kusumu I totally understand or any that. other place. Yes, and when it comes to blogging, that, then yes. that is the work of Invest. But yes. what does the uh, uh, caustic marketing uh, agency and the services So what offer? you're doing, eh? what mm -hmm. you're doing, um, apart, Invest has its own editorial team, okay. part of whom are working for Calstic. Okay. So Calstic, uh, you know, Invest is a distribution channel. It is a content discovery platform. So when people read articles at Invask, mm -hmm. most of them, we are, it is not the editorial team who write apart from news mm -hmm. and features. Mm -hmm. Others are from experts, others from organizations that distribute this content for us. So the Calstic team mm -hmm. actually creates this content for you. So we are okay. creating articles, mm -hmm. we are creating uh, product descriptions for people, yes. we are creating profiles for people, mm -hmm. we are creating brand identity designs okay including uh logos um you know product designs mm -hmm. uh, uh all types of graphics design mm -hmm. and also social media content and management and digital ads all right yes. so how do you push the 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 the, the how do you push the products for your clients that mm -hmm. is to just uh, fuel on the sales so how I push my, 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 yes, my, my how I market myself. Yeah. yeah, and also your clients. Mm -hmm. So what do you do, eh? number spaces. one, eh? yeah. um, we have a very new company. So mm -hmm. we are leveraging on our, on our, on our network. Okay. You know, part of the subscribers of Invask is 14,000 plus mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. These are people who read our magazine every other single month. These are mm -hmm. people who have attended CEO's breakfast. Okay. They actually know us. They know what we do best and they have actually experienced our services. So mm -hmm. for now, we are leveraging on them. Mm -hmm. And these are the people we are reaching out, telling them what we do, and they are actually uh, enrolling into some of the services that you're doing. So apart from that, we are also using email marketing right. and social media ads. That right. is really, really working for us. So in the next so six those are months, the major two, yeah. yes, on the, in the next six months, that is what we're doing. We are leveraging on what we already have. Okay. Then from there, we'll do, of course, billboards, mm -hmm. we'll do, uh, the paid media, word of mouth, you know, walk-ins and everything. All right. Yes. So I would like to find out, uh, one of our viewers has asked this question, mm -hmm. and she's asking, uh, how does the CEO as such mm -hmm. engine optimization work exactly when it comes to marketing your business and just putting it out there? So it, it is 
the, the simplest way like I've just explained a couple mm -hmm. of minutes ago. So what happens? Eh? When you search on Google, you use particular words right. which are indexed mm -hmm. on a website and then Google crawlers. Mm -hmm. So for example, if, um, let me give an example of um, Safaricom, if your phone is off mm -hmm. and I'm calling you, Safaricom has a way of letting me know you are off so and when you open when you switch on your phone i'm told you get a message and i tried calling you mm -hmm. message so most people are like how do i activate i tried calling you mm -hmm. so i search on the internet how to activate safaricom mm -hmm. i tried calling you you yeah. see those words that i've used safaricom i tried calling you so google using its crawlers and technology will look for websites who have written content in this with this particular uh -huh. words Right. You see? Yes. So if you're going to index your, um, to optimize your website, mm -hmm. you're going to ask yourself, I am in uh, agribusiness solutions. Mm -hmm. I am in real estate. Mm -hmm. Number one, what, which words exactly do people use while searching for real estate solutions? Just to get, uh, so that your viewers or your audience, uh, your target market can yes. easily access your content. Just yes, so you yeah. must ask yourself, which exact words do mm. people search? All right. Let's look yes. at the CEO's pre breakfast annual summit. What is it mm. all about? And you guys celebrated the third annual yes. uh, uh, breakfast summit just uh, on February. The other, the other, on yes, February on February year. 7th, we yes, watched so Move and Pick. All right. Tell us more about uh, the breakfast, the CEO's breakfast, and what it's all about. Well, um, I'm always excited anytime I talk about the CEO's breakfast because um, I got the idea in November 2017. Um, but back then, it was Young CEO's Breakfast. And uh, I had just cleared campus in 2016, um, started business, mm. no money, no, no resources in terms of networks, and I didn't have anything to leverage on. And um, I thought business was tough. You know, you know that the, 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 the political temperatures in this country were at the highest. You know, holding one election after the other and okay. all those, and business mm. was disrupted though not more like uh, during this COVID-19 season. So I thought, uh, apart from me, there must be other people in business who are young like me mm -hmm. and have experiencing, uh, have experienced these challenges. But then I had an office at, um, at uh, this corner house. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how about I invite like 10 or 20 friends who are in business, then we discuss. Mm 